yield inefficiency here, all this buy side here, the price is reaching down to offer. Price into this buy side of balance outside of efficiency. So we'll see it delivered to profit exit on this one too. ES has the same thing here. So it must have turned into better than either one. Small little balance right there.
you're paying attention, what the price is doing, this is actually my market maker sell model. So it can go down to here, which is also inside of this inefficiency. Well, not, it's, it's not inside of it, but it also can go to this depth of take these off for a second. So you see a little inefficiency right there. So we're going to actually put it right on the high of that fair value gap right there. And the sell side residing right below that. Here, my dryer. I'm in my kitchen area, and we have a laundry room that's on the first floor. And my wife left the door open while she's running the dryer. So you're hearing that in the background. I apologize if it's annoying, but I'm not going to get up and close it. <laughs> so it should accelerate lower here and go after the sell side. Right below here. This is the original consolidation. Runs up, pre accumulation, pre accumulation, smart money reversal, low risk sell, redistribution, second stage distribution, acceleration, attack the original consolidation with the sell side reside that low right there. There's several factors between this low and that. And efficiency right there. It could go a little bit more than that too, depending upon how overzealous it gets going into the close. But it's not it's not enough for me to want to do anything with that. I was actually trying to take a losing trade. I was asked on Twitter. I get this asked a lot. Can you show a losing trade? I mean, I, I guess I have to create some kind of a drawdown to teach how to resolve drawdown later this year or so. Uh, I genuinely did try to uh, take a losing trade up here. I put the stop off real close, thinking it might bump it. It didn't do it. It started working out in my favor. And I said it would go down to here instead, so I closed the trade. And we've gone down there. I sold short in here. And added to it here because I already knew I was going to win the trade, so might as well just make the best of it, right? Don't waste a good opportunity. So we'll take uh, we'll take three off here. We'll take one off right under here. one just underneath there and the final will be the, the target here and that will close out this week Partial taken.
right underneath this low, then this low, and then that small little gap right there. Come some more look. Does luck exist? Is luck a real phenomenon? There's hmm. another partial. And we'll keep it around five hundred dollars from the balance. Just in case good old ICT gets it wrong. These next two might fill pretty quick. My stop is rolled, in case you're wondering. And I saw you were just thinking it. Why did I roll my stop there? It's just above mean threshold of that last up close candle. So if it does roll back on me and stops me, I'm, I'm okay with it. But if once it could keep going lower, then obviously that's a, a favorable location for a trail stop. The logic would be, even if it has a little retracement up into this inefficiency here and bumps the bottom of this old buy side and balance sell side inefficiency, uh, that's completely permissible. Just to prove the theory, I'm going to add one contract if it bumps the bottom end of that buy side and balance sell side efficiency. It could run lower from here. It's already done its deliver to the high end of that everybody got right there
watch there's wicks right here consequent encroachment of those wicks I'd like to see that be a barrier if anything on the upside starts to materialize As a reminder, when I was teaching the concept of five handles or five points, which is 20 ticks in the E-mini S&P, uh, the equivalent for NASDAQ would be 20 handles or 80 ticks. Just reading some comments. I think I toss them in here just in case the person that made that inquiry was listening, they had their answer. Does that look random to you? Or does it look like it's engineered, coded, scripted? authored <laughs> oh. so fun so you can see that 15,289 and a quarter level that's an actual low right there so right before all this run up stop loss orders are sitting right below that what kind of stop loss sell stops why would that be advantageous for price to deliver there from up here here on here here that would be counterparty to buy at a lower price from sellers that want to sell at a low price right below that low and then one fell swoop they could take that liquidity and reach into this inefficiency and order block and complete the numbers for today I don't trust those dojis. This is promoting the idea that this is going to turn and go higher. That's not the case. Marks on eat right over top of this, run right over top of it, and go right into this area here. You might want to kiss the bottom of that. Buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency once more. I would have favored not doing that again, but it's okay. We're leading into the last hour of New York PM session. And that begins at 3 o'clock. And so we're about uh, five minutes or so, no less than five minutes for that to begin. All of this drop from here to here is nicely delivered efficient inefficiency here was re repriced too 
all of this back and forth price action, then down, we got an inefficiency here. We've been in there multiple times. We hit the bottom of the buy side and balance outside of efficiency. So it's all green light for it to go lower and pair up that sell side liquidity, deliver inefficiency over here to efficient right in here. I'm not saying that's the lowest of the day, but uh, that's all I'm looking for. So inside of all this fractal, that's what I'm looking for for the completion of that run. Being Friday, non-farm Friday, I'm sorry, non-farm payroll Friday. Um, I pretty much, I hammered this today. Uh, I beat it up pretty bad. Just see executions. And I'll change the chart so you can see it's not market replay or anything like that. I apologize. I know it probably gets on your nerves moving the trial around because I don't like it when people do it. <laughs> it gets on my nerves. But I want to add that uh, extra detail in here.
the question I like to always ask is internal dialogue. Like if I was long and I had my stop loss below that low, would I feel safe right now? And I, I wouldn't. And they should be trembling right now too. They're not going to give them a chance to get off of it now. Quickly surge for it. Notice the time. Three o'clock. Where's the liquidity? Below fifteen two eighty nine and a quarter. And what's below that? An inefficiency. So now I don't want to see it come back up to the bottom of that old buy side of balance sell side of efficiency right here. I don't want to see that bump it again. So it either goes to my limit order or limit orders or it stops me out there and I'm content with that. I stop sitting right above those really smooth highs. You could still knock those out and then come down and go to my target. It's okay. I've already smashed it today pretty good. It's really nice being in a position where being right is not the end result of choice. It's just and you're in a position now where if it goes to your target, it's wonderful. And if it doesn't, you've already taken something off multiple times. And I was all over this thing like white on rice today. So hammered it pretty good. Now with all things being equal, it should deliver on this candle or the very next candle. For those that are asking, why would I say something like that? You can see a small little separation between this candle's low and this candle's high. We went up in there once, twice, and we started the price run. So we went below this candle's opening right there. So these two up close candles together, I want to see price move away from that when it does that. If it doesn't, then I have to accept the fact that I may get stopped out. No emotion, no reason for concern, no excitement when you're right. It's a continuous balancing act a trader must uh, maintain.
They're holding it a lot here in the last hour. So you're getting a feel for why I speed these things up. It's like watching paint dry sometimes. So I'm looking at it, I'm wondering, does it want to really accelerate down to this order block here, these two consecutive down close candles, the high to the opening? That would be a very sensitive price point for me because they have a fair value gap in the same area. But I'm leaving what I have here in terms of the orders. If it can book those orders, that completes my week. Lots of manipulation here. That's one. Let's see if we can get that final one here inside that fair value gap. Take this stop and roll it down to the rejection block right there on this up close candle. So if it stops me there, I'm comfortable with that. I don't care. It is traded to the market maker sell model, sell side liquidity, which is the reason why I had that limit order there. And the two remaining contracts I have are being framed on the basis of that small little fair value gap there. So if it can deliver that, wonderful. If it doesn't, then it stops me out. That's just as well. Here we are, just like it's coded, just like it was explained in source code. <laughs> so my friends, that is a $26,240 day. All over this thing, right out of my lecture notes and mentorship. You can see that all the fills. I'll take them off for you. As you can see, it's not market replay. And I'll toggle to yes. So it's not like I can go back and pull them up again once you change the screen. If you reset your account, all that stuff, it wouldn't be there. Okay, so again, that's $26,240 all on the ES. I'm sorry, on the uh, NQ. Up and down the macro i'll teach you that this weekend on sunday at 2 p.m enjoy your weekend until talk to you next time be safe